Hello everybody, let's get straight to it. Today I want to tell you a story about one requirement and two different ways of handling it. The story will be in pictures and here's the first one. So here we look at the car that has 15 blue bins. This setup is typical for e-commerce businesses that are shipping small items to end consumers and they sell them through an online store. So the picker gets the card and goes through aisles of the warehouse, collecting the items and putting them into those small blue bins. Each blue bin is intended for one sales order, for one shipment to an end consumer. So here is an example of the card that has 15 uh, bins in it. Uh, now let's talk about the first way of handling that requirement. The first one is we look at the setup that was done to create warehouse work. So we use a wave template. The key setups here is that the wave for our sales orders will be created automatically. The wave will also uh, open, uh, shipments will also be assigned to that wave. And we also have automatic processing of that wave at a certain threshold. So the threshold in this case was 15 shipments. So as soon as that wave has accumulated 15 shipments in it, and if we release entire sales orders, that means 15 sales orders, that wave will be processed automatically and the warehouse work will be created based on that. So here's an important distinction here. So the warehouse work is not created automatically on the release. In this design, warehouse work is created when the wave is processed at the threshold of 15 orders. Uh, another picture that I want to show you here is how we created work template. So the work template is an instruction on how the warehouse work is created. It just specifies the number of, of pairs for picks and puts. But also the setup that you are looking at here right now is we also define the grouping criteria. So in this case, we have said that if the wave ID is the same, that means if the warehouse work was uh, created from one wave, all the warehouse work should be grouped under one work ID. So coming back to our previous example, that means that if we have 15 sales orders, 15 shipments added to that wave, one work ID will be created because we have specified a work header breaks and we make sure that we are grouping by the wave ID over here. The second line that you look at here has an importance too. This allows us to optimize the picking route. So each location in our warehouse has a sort code. That sort code is basically any value from one to whatever the number of locations that you have in warehouse. What we are telling the system when it goes and groups our picks for our 15 orders, make sure that we sort by the sort code. That means let's start uh, from the location that has a sort code one and then goes all the way to the highest number. So this allows us again to optimize the picking. So we are looking to pick from one location. We go to the location that has a lowest uh, sort code, for example, one, and then we're going to pick all the items from that location. So it could be an item for one sales order on our card. It could be uh, the item on multiple sales orders on, on our card, but nonetheless, the idea here is that the picking guides you to the location based on the sort code and tells you to pick all the items for one or multiple orders from that location be before moving to the next one. So the end result, and this is just an example right up here, is that we have multiple picks. And as you can see right now, my location ID is sorted. So I'm starting from bulk 001, then moving to the 02, and then end up in 003. And you also can see that I have multiple lines. Even though I'm in the same location, bulk 001, my first two lines are for the same item, but they are for the two different shipments, for two different sales orders. Therefore, there are two separate pick lines. We can also see that we're picking the same item FSS900 from a different location because most probably bulk 001 does not have any more quantities of that item. So here is our work report. As you can see, multiple picks sorted by the location, sorted uh, 
in, in ascending order. And then we have one put operation that actually puts it into the packing location, which is a separate topic, which I will discuss in our next video about the functionality of the packing workstation. So we can see that in this example, we are picking 10 units in total. We are picking three items and they're coming in from multiple sales orders. The part of design here was that we could print as some sort of piece of paper that represents a specific sales order. So we can print, for example, either commercial invoice that you can see on the right hand side or the pick list that represents that just one ship and one sales order and put this piece of paper in individual bins. So now when we have this card full of 15 bins, we can put sales order paper in each individual bin. All right, so here's how that warehouse work looks like. Again, you can lock it uh, with a user if you want to, doesn't matter. Uh, then we actually go to the handheld device. Again, depending on which method you prefer, either you are using user guided or a system guided. In this example, I'm showing you a user guided approach where uh, warehouse work report was generated and we are scanning that work ID that again represents all our orders on the card and we start picking that order. Uh, you can also use a system guided method that would not require that piece of paper on the left hand side to be printed and the system will just go and find the next work ID based on the sorting criteria that you specified for your system guided uh, mobile device menu. All right, so here is a brief explanation of the first approach and let's talk about now the second approach for the same requirement. The second approach actually uh, involves cluster picking. Uh, in order to use cluster picking functionality, we have to define at least one cluster profile. So the cluster profile that we have configured here uh, actually has few parameters that I would like to walk you through with. So the first one is we automatically generate the cluster ID. Cluster ID is a unique number that is assigned to each cluster created. So that number can be either entered by the picker or generated by the system based on the number sequence. So in this case, we decided this cluster ID is not really important to us. Let it generate uh, by the system. The second one is we activate the positions. So in our cluster picks, there will be 15 position. Each position will be uh, representing a specific shipment, a specific sales order. And as you can see that the limit on the number of position is 15. So our cluster cannot have more than 15 positions because we can only accommodate 15 bins on our card. Then we have a position name. It can be either alpha or numeric. In this case, it's numeric. So it starts from one ends at 15. And another piece here that we can optionally add is a verification. So we can say that when we do the pick and we do our put, we can make sure that we scan the license plate that is associated with a specific position or the position number itself. All right, so there are two types of validation that you can use. And in this case, uh, we decided to use a license plate scan and I will explain you how that is done later on. Another important piece here, again, just to make sure that we optimize in our picking route is we are making sure that our cluster is sorted based on the location ID. So I'm not using a sort code, even though I could as I did in my previous, in example number one, but I'm using the location ID itself. So this basically tells the system. So when the cluster is created and we are going about picking individual uh, shipments on that, in that cluster, make sure that we start with the location ID from the smallest location ID and we go to the highest location ID. So we're sorting in an ascending order right here. Again, you could have used the same sorting method as the uh, sort code of the location or you can use the location id itself to sort on another piece of setup that i want to touch on here is the mobile device menu item we make sure that we created a cluster pick create mobile device menu it's it's directed not by the user it's not directed by the system it's actually cluster picking directed and in order for us to make it work, we want to make sure that we associate a cluster profile ID that's a previous slide to that mobile device menu item. 
So a, a lot of setups here, which I will not be talking about in this particular video, but mind you that in order to use the cluster picking, we have to have a mobile device menu that has a cluster picking and we need to associate our cluster profile with that mobile device menu. When it comes to our mobile device menu, we also have this work confirmation setup. This is an optional validation of three things. You can optionally validate the location ID. That means the picker, when he or she picks, needs to specify or enter or scan the location ID. So just to make sure that the picker picks from the correct location. Picker may also need to validate the quantity, which is right up here. That means even though the system tells him or her to pick two units of that item, uh, the picker would be required to enter that quantity to make sure that he's picking the correct quantity. And the third option of validation that we have turned on up here was the product confirmation. That means I need to scan the product or the item ID to make sure that I'm actually grabbing the uh, correct item from the shelf or from that location. Of course, to facilitate an easier validation of those three uh, pieces, of, uh, pieces of info, barcodes would probably be optimal. That means I can scan the location I need to validate it. I can uh, scan the product I need to validate for the quantity. Most probably that would be a manual entry using the handheld device and the keyboard over there. Again, you can do the validation on the picking side or you can do the validation on the putting side, which I don't really have in this example, but the work type in this scenario will, will say put instead of pick. So same thing, you can either validate it on the front end when you do pick, validate the location, quantity, and the item, or you can validate it on the back end when you put in that and make sure that you're putting the correct item into the correct location with the correct quantity. Or you can do both, which can be uh, maybe too much in certain cases, but just keep that in mind. Okay, so you can see that in our second scenario, even though I'm, I'm activating that work confirmation, because the type of the picking in this case is cluster picking, you will see how that setup might not necessarily work as intended at the end. Just wanted to point that out to you. All right, let's move on. So the way warehouse work is created in this second scenario is actually order by order. So that means when the sales order is created and released to warehouse, we do not wait to accumulate these orders into wave. We create in the wave for individual order and we processing that wave for individual order. And that actually creates the work ID. So we're going to have 15 work IDs for all 15 orders. So we're going to have individual work ID created for individual orders. The reason being here is that we're creating the work as soon as it's released to warehouse. So in this case, you can see that work ID 37 is just for one order for one shipment and it just uh, one pick and put of a specific item. Just wanted to point that out to you. Now, when we go and we start creating the cluster, we need to assign work IDs to that cluster, right? So because our work IDs are per order right now, that means we need to scan 15 work IDs representing 15 orders into our cluster when we do create. Uh, so in this case, I needed to have some sort of piece of paper or some other uh, barcode that I would be able to easily add my work to the cluster. So in this case, I'm just scanning the work ID and adding it to the cluster. In this case, it's a position number one. So the cluster ID you can see right up here was automatically generated based on our cluster profile. And we are assigning the first work to the first position. And we have to do it for all 15 positions in our cart. When you do that, uh, because it's a separate work ID, the way the cluster picking works right now, you need to assign a unique license plate per work ID. So may, that may uh, not be ideal in certain cases, but because we are validating on the license plate, that means we're going to have 15 work IDs and each of those 15 work IDs will have 15 positions in our cluster and each of those positions will have a unique license plate linked to that again. So that license plate in our example right here would actually um, be linked to the bin itself. So the bin may have a card and the bin number that can be a barcode, but we're basically associating that, uh, that work with a specific position with a specific license plate that actually represents the bin. 
So let me just summarize the two approaches that we discussed in this video. So the first one is when we use the regular user directed picking. So the first point I wanted to highlight is because of the way we created the work, we generated one work ID for all orders in our card, right? So we're going to have one work ID. That means it can be assigned to one picker and one picker will be responsible for picking all 15 orders on that card. The second point I want to highlight is because of the way we created a work ID license plate will actually represent the card itself. So the card that has 15 bins, it's easier for the handling because the reality is one card is just one unit that moves around. So the handling it in a packing workstation will be easier. You still have individual 15 shipments on that card, but it's still just represented by one license plate. So the you know, disadvantage that you can think of here would be that you don't really know which position individual shipment, individual sales order is located, so which bin it is located. All you know, it sits on the card number, let's say 15, but you don't really know oh, the bin number on that card that the sales order sits on. The, another shortcoming would be that there is no position validation. So when I go and pick my item, I can put, put it into any of those 15 bins that I have. So that's why it would be uh, beneficial for you for a picker to have uh, an invoice or a picking list or a sales order um, confirmation of some sort that will show that this item should go to this bin and also to this bin but there is no system validation or system guidance in terms of that this picked item should go to the position number three that means bin number three and this item should go to the position number five right so that's a missing component in the first scenario and the last point on the first scenario would be the pick location quantity and item number validation does exist. So remember where we could optionally enable validation on the quantity location and the item number. So that validation does work either on the picking the front end or the putting the back end. The second scenario that we talked about was the uh, because of the way the work was created, it was created as soon as the sales order was released to warehouse, we ended up with separate 15 work IDs, one for each order on the card. As a result, we will have 15 license plate associated with each of those sales orders on our card. Because we use cluster profile with positions, we validate positions or the license plate at the time of the pick. So that ensures that the picker actually puts it, puts the item in the correct position, in the correct license plate, in the correct bin. So that does exist. Because of that validation and because we using a cluster picking in that second scenario, all this optional validation on the pick or the put that worked in our first scenario will not work in the cluster picking scenario. So there will be no item number validation, no location validation, etc. So that's a missing piece right now. Right now. Uh, what we did, we contacted Microsoft and Microsoft assured us that there is a lot of development work that is done on the cluster picking to uh, enhance that functionality so it makes uh, more sense and works better for the e-commerce scenarios that we just uh, looked at because retail and e-commerce is an important strategic direction for Microsoft. So they are investing some time and money into making that cluster picking functionality work, making sure that this functionality will be a better fit for the retailers. Um, what we encourage you to do after you looked at this video is you can go to the website uh, that is next on consulting and you can navigate to the free Dynamics 365 environment where we encourage you to test the functionality that I described to you. You can learn the systems, the systems we are doing our best to make sure that the systems are running 24 seven. You can do your testing, you can do your uh, learning and you can also use our environments for demos. Any use is fair as, as far as we're concerned. So hope you found that video informative. Please let us know what you think and until the next time.